In June of 2022, during the onset of winter, I was well overdue to visit the Victorian Alpine National Park to hunt for Samba deer. On this occasion, I would hunt with a fellow Australian Deer Association member from Western Australia, Jarvis Decker. We had backpack hunted in Western Australia for red stags during the raw, with great success, thanks to the efforts of the West Australian Deer Association. And now it was time for Jarvis to have his first crack at Samba deer. Thanks again to the support of the Melbourne branch of the ADA. Like with the many other annual sojourns of mine into Alpine country, I like to get all the logistics out of the way at night time. An unproductive time that bears little value to a hunter other than to get from A to B before sunrise. A strategy that Andre Alapati and I mastered in our early 20s, when sleep mattered little to our youthful enthusiasm and unwavering energy to get cracking. Now, in our 40s, the mind is more capable than the body, but the strategy remains effective all the same. Here we encounter a couple of local Samba hunters, Steve and Wayne, who have the same idea. On our way into our hunting spot, bumped into two blokes, and they've got themselves into a spot of bother. So, they're just trying to get the winch working, but it's not playing the game. Yeah, they're just about to slide down off the hill, which would be no good. Oh, she's cold. We're at 1,500 metres here and starting to drop down. Just at a little choke point, so a little bit of work to do and then we should be about to start our first day. I'll try and get more off it. Pretty brittle. Well, it's not the top one like that. What a disaster. <laughs> oh, this, is, this is all good mate. It's an aftermarket Toyota mod. mod. Now I think the winch is mounted a bit low, like an insurance company um, must have put it in a little bit low. Yes. Bot it up. <laughs> grind, <laughs> bot it up, star pick it in there. Yeah, they're good. He's good. Yeah, he's good. Yep, I reckon he's good. Straighten up your wheels, straighten your wheels up. You're good mate, you're good. Yeah, you're all right. Now, now straighten your wheels up. I'll, I'll, I'll drop, I'll wheels. drop the wind. <laughs> Look at the carnage you've left. <laughs> After the encounter with the two other Victorian Samba Hunters, we made good progress to our intended destination. We parked at the top of a long gentle sloping spur and saddled our packs to commence our descent into the valley below. Alright Jarvis, first time backpacking into this Victorian Alpine National Park. 
3.7 kilometers down in that direction we're heading and we should be there by lunch I'd say So Jarvis and I are heading into this spot for seven days. We come out, today's Friday and we come out Friday. We might come out Thursday night. But we drop down, we're out of, we're almost out of the snow line. I reckon another two or three hundred metres and I think it'll be fairly sparse. It's very wet so the snow's not going to last long. But we're going to drop down and camp at about a thousand metres and then kind of wrap around into some open country that's between eight hundred metres and a thousand and we're just going to use our binoculars so we'll try and be strategic with our eyes certainly for the first couple of days you could try to play it but you're never gonna beat me look the other way what I'm doing ain't easy bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me Body hands break through the chains go free me Looking for change, looking for pain Pulling a mob, pushing a train I'll never stop, stick to a lane Pick up the pieces and go rearrange uh, I'll be the best above all the rest Put me to the test uh, Expect nothing less, you check as I'm chess What's happening next, yeah. He got the venom, a tangible weapon No coming in second, this life is a lesson He got a new engine from pain, that's a blessing New focus, no guessing, just bold an obsession All in his possession, you got the retention I'll leave an impression and take a redemption Just kill no discretion, your mind is a weapon 11, 11, it's time for progression, oh! You could try to play, but you're never gonna beat me Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy Bloody and stain from the people who deceive me Muddy hands break through the chains, go free me People like sheep move feet, hurt it easy You don't wanna be fast asleep when they see me Better stand tall, ready for a fight, believe me When they try the chains, you can say no, free me so he's been looking for somebody who could save him Instead of searching inside for what they gave him A strong will, strong mind causes mayhem What a great way to start a trip Cold, snowy, but wet And we've just got a fire going And we can glass a nice open little gut That's about a kilometre and Part further as parts 1.3. Good mate Zane from New Zealand and Taupuri. <laughs> Taupuri. He uh, has given us a campsite and it's an absolute ripper. Just down below us, right on the edge of a spur. It's very um, well situated to glass and about oh, 270 degrees really. Amazing spot. It's a bit windy now. Whoops. But when the wind dies off tomorrow and for Monday, Tuesday, I can imagine it's going to be quite a productive spot. <laughs> Been squeezing it through here, putting it into there so that's clean. These are dirty and I'll take these back to camp and sort them. It's been a reasonably um, slow day in terms of spotting stuff. Haven't spotted an animal yet. Haven't got our eye in. It's been a bit windy, although we've been glassing into the spots that are not windy. There's a beautiful spot straight down below camp that's got a big game trail actually going through the bush so fingers crossed that produces something and that is the evening glassing over I can only just make out 
the open face, but I really can't make out what's on it. Mmm. Yeah, I'm four pieces of bacon, and this is the finished product. Can't wait to eat it. Oh, well, welcome to day two. We're, um, we're just up, it's now 7. 35 so 7 30 is when the sun's first coming up but it's still a bit too dark i've had to put the ice hop to 3000 can't glass yet but we're um we're going to get glassing straight down below camp and we'll probably focus on all the country right under us because the wind's been coming from the southwest so we'll focus on any of those like sheltered little wee gullies that don't get the wind and their bush faces that we can glass into and then we'll wrap our way around under us and follow these open um, ledges all the way around into the distance over here continuing to glass and then we'll get to the end of the day and then we'll come back and we'll camp here again we're not going to move camp this is quite a strategic spot there's just so much country to use our eyes so that's going to be the plan we're just going to not cover much ground with our feet, use our eyes. All of these faces below us are north-east facing slopes and the wind is, um, actually it's just dropped off now, the wind was going before but that would be the shelter, most sheltered place in this part that we're looking anyway, then we'll just wrap our way around as I mentioned earlier. Just started snowing a little bit. We're on a bit of a nice game trail here. Old sign, weeks old. But it's going to wrap us around into some great glassing vantage points. Temperatures just dropped right now as we're just wrapping around. It's a bit of Clouds come over with some moisture and it's just starting to snow but it's a very, it's that wet snow so it won't last. You can even see the snows receding further up. But yeah that's the valley behind us there for any of you that are familiar with it. I'm sure you'll pick out lots of the land features. Pretty low rub though. sandbit right down the bottom in the sun. I'm just going to try and pull the main camera on it. It's a bit hard to see because it's obscured by a little brush and it's about to get behind the spur. It's way down the bottom. Anyway, it's just good to go get a gauge what elevation band um, they're at. I'm not saying they're all going to be at that level but at least now it's given me somewhere to start looking to see if there's any others. I think it's a hind. Get so mad, there's no control in me. My thoughts get so bad, I'm like, I might grab a bat, I don't know. My wrath, my blood boils over, like, oh god, here goes. I lost all feeling from my head to my toes. You said some shit that I can't let go, so just stay tuned for the rest of the show. So, have you ever felt betrayed? Switch is how you see things, realize something needs change. Cause I know you got me up, let me show you what's up. Enough is enough I'll take a face full of pavement Just to make a statement I know there's no turning back Oh God, adrenaline wasted So mad I can taste it I know there's no turning back I'll do what it takes I ain't making mistakes like that I've just been down about another 30 metres down this face Glassing into a nice gully that's quite sheltered and I've spotted a young stag, two hinds and a, I reckon a 24, maybe 25 inch stag, um, so two stags and I'm thinking that if Jarvis wants to have a crack at that we can drop down to it. Um, the plan would be to 
Well, we have to work this wind. The wind's coming this way, so the plan would have to be to cut up above it and then work our way around to it. But for now, it's not doing anything, it's just feeding. I'd say they're going to stay feeding all day, it's pretty cold. And <clears throat> Yeah, we'll just keep evaluating this nice wallow at the bottom of this slope that we're on where those two hinds went and I've just been saying to Jarvis there'll be a stag in here because those hinds lower down there'll be a stag higher up in this gully and we spent another 10 or 15 minutes glassing until I spotted the first one the first one's a young one and it's just under a band of bluffs um, and the second one that's a little bit older is a bit further down the face towards those hinds. Yeah, it's good stuff. So Jarvis, you and I, we're both Australian Deer Association members, and ADA members. We're both from Western Australia and we're probably quite unique in terms of the lack of hunting opportunities that we've got in Western Australia, but there's still some. And now we're visiting Victoria and we're able to hunt in another part of Australia that's a lot more promoting of of hunting and we're hunting after Sam but just tell me a little bit about what it means to you to be an ADA member. Yeah I think what struck me the most I haven't been an active member for that long in WA probably two or three years what struck me the most when I joined um, was the sort of community <clears throat> like something as simple as hunting brought together so many people that were like-minded and, and welcoming. Uh, there's, it's not a huge branch, but there's definitely a really good mix of um, more experienced people like, like yourself and, and a, a handful of others that are really um, open and, and helpful and love passing on that sort of what they've learned which is great and then there's a, a fair share of younger guys so it's it's a really good little um, group and and that community leads leads into some of these sort of hunting <coughs> opportunities you've got people who are um, willing and able to go along or invite you along trips like this which is pretty huge you sort of um, I don't know if you'd want to do a trip like this on your own unless you really knew the area hunting solo here would be pretty daunting if it was your first time <clears throat> and I think probably the other the other side of an ADA membership would be sort of political work that they're doing um, behind the scenes and trying to push to keep these sorts of places open to hunting and, and um, even create more opportunities in these states or other states is is really important because I think there's a lot of people that want to try and shut this down um, and there's got to be somebody a group of people doing the work to keep it open otherwise we won't be able to come on trips like this anymore in the future which would be a real shame this is a, this is a beautiful place it's amazing oh, time to warm the toes Where that long grassy clearing is, sort of long, when I say long it's like semi long, go to the top of it and he's directly in the bush where there's a whole um, cluster of dead tree heads. It looks like it's going to walk straight out to where those other ones were. And he was moving from, I'm sure it's a stag because of the size of its body. Yeah. In the bush. As in well. the bush. Yeah. Uh, at, at, at the same bottom edge of the clearing, you can see it moving through oh, now. It's not far behind at all. Same level 
Oh shit, we can't afford to have any sticks fall down. Right behind that tree that sticks up from the top side of the clearing. Plan is we've we've actually seen ten deer in total this morning. Nine from this one spot. There's been uh, two young stags and a medium stag in the gully down to my right, and two hinds. And then off to my left, there's two mature hinds, one yearling, and a mature stag that we saw very briefly. His antlers were long um, but that's all I got to see of it and I tried to get on camera and he'd moved in behind and since then we have not seen him move out. We've seen the two big hinds and the yearling move uh, through some open stuff but that stag's been a lot yeah a lot more cautious. He always large. So we're gonna um, we're gonna wrap around a little bit further on the space to just open up some more glassable country and then we'll come back and we'll probably glass this whole um, system until it gets dark. actually not too bad. There's plenty of um, handholds and there's plenty of trees to stay safe by holding on to. You'd want to be careful you don't pull one of the boulders down though. Pretty spectacular eh? What's your impressions? Good eye. We had a few deer down in here. You can see a bit of the grass has browsed here. All the, all the street grass browsed everywhere around me. So this morning, this morning we were up under this, on top of this bluff there with the fire. And we stayed there until lunchtime. Then we walked around the top and then down the spur. And where that young stag was that we saw this morning, I walked right under here. In that direction. So I'm sitting up there with Jarvis about 20 minutes ago and I said I wanted to change and move around so I've gone around the top of that little bluff that we're sitting on near those deer were this morning. And I could hear a bird making a hell of a racket down below us and I said I reckon there's deer down in this guy right now disturbing that bird. You know, so I've walked around and just came onto a, a deer bed only a few minutes ago. And below me here, 
is a line that goes pretty much directly under Jarvis, but he can't see because it's too obstructed by trees. Oh, good fire. Well, I just got back into camp and it's 5.35. Jarvis has just popped down to grab some water. And I'm going to start making some dinner. What a great day. I think we've seen 12 deer or 13 deer in total and got honked at by one on the way out. The chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up, it's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me. It's not working now, maybe it's the chemistry. It's time to break up so I can make a better me. Better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold shape fine. There's a hind up high, not, not above the bluff where we were, it's a bit further along. Could that be the same hind we saw last it's night? It's pretty it was small, like that one we saw yesterday. Yeah, okay. It wasn't that big. Um, I haven't seen any of the stairs. Okay, that's good. been wading out in this drizzle. It hasn't really rained, it's just been that constant sort of wet, foggy, misty drizzle. Everything's saturated. So we decided to get a fire going while we're glassing down into this face. But I've just said to Jarvis, I reckon as soon as we've finished here, the thermals are now working up. Let's pack everything up and drop down the spur, drop our camp, cut round onto the other side of this little gully, and just play the waiting game. We've got all day, and that stag that he's seen, it's a, about a 20 incher, maybe 22, but you know, it's a young stag, he's happy to take it, and I think that's what we should do, get down there into the zone and just play the waiting game. We're too far away for a shot here, this offers us great advantage, but the fact is there's an animal there that we already know that he'd like to go for, so staying up here to glass would only give us an opportunity to see more deer and maybe a big mature stag which I'd be keen to go after but I'm actually really happy to support Jarvis to drop down in here so I think that's what we're going to do have a brew first and then get out of here I've just spotted a hind down here at 370 metres and I've just said to Jarvis just get your gun set up because it might only present itself with a very small window and I think that it's part of the group with the potential with the stag and I've been saying before I reckon they're going to move their way up onto the spur and maybe feed their way into this face that's about 340 metres away which is shootable for Jarvis with his um, cannon Can't see if it's with anything, but if the stag is there, I'd love to. I'd love to. 
enough to get eyes on it. And then, uh, this is all set up, ready to have a shot. It's at 350, so a bit of a steep angle. 37 degrees. Rightio. Uh, if you were a deer that was born on that side, as opposed to down that side, oh, I think you'd be disadvantaged. Like there must be deer over there if there's a wall. Yeah, I think it's pterodactyl country over there. They die of 50 inch, <laughs> 15 year old 50 incher. Yeah, I don't think anyone's putting eyes on one too far into that stuff. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go. Every single day I'll be making moves Till I'm buried in my grave uh, To the system I don't wanna be a slave I've been doing shit my way uh, Or the highway And in the driveway Is a nice range Cause I grind through the climb I invite pain You'll never hear me bitch Nah, I don't complain Just gotta flip the switch And you can go and obtain Anything you want Anything you need Your mind's got the key ingredient It's belief uh, They'll see with the negativity But I just slide right by that Low, you can still go Even when you feel slow You can still go Even when there's no hope You can still go I never answered a no Man, I still go Go, go, go Bedding area right where I am, just behind you. See, they love to bed with their back against structure. Oh my gosh, found this light nearly meter point six. I reckon I'll show it to you in a sec. You can see the little sack that was covering its eye. For anyone that knows what this is, please comment. But I would assume copperhead or I mean gosh do they even get that long though look how long it is or is it maybe a king brown eastern brown bloody long I didn't think copperhead's got that long um, just spotted three deer two of them look like they were rubbing their heads together but I couldn't really make out any antlers, so they could be just like young spikers giving each other a bit of a head rub. They've kind of moved away and they're in the sun glare, which is a bit of a pain. Anyway, Jarvis is wrapped around and he's going around the other side, so he can glass back into this country underneath me. And I can glass this way. That's the end of day three. Glass right up until last light. All I saw was the three hinds straight behind me. Didn't see the stag with it. Jarvis glassed from the other side, but I'm not so sure he got round enough and down enough to glass and open up the different angles under the face. But that wind's not good. It's just sucking down. So I really hope we haven't blown it out. Anyway, back to camp, cook up dinner, and we'll see you on day four. Morning, this is day four. And I've just dropped straight down from camp, just under one of the 
these ledges and I'm going to stalk my way up into the wind. It's pretty thick in this little dogwood gun but I'm hoping that it gets a bit open. Let's see if these uh, these booties help. That stack is just keep moving down to this thick stuff. It's so hard to stalk it without making noise. I'm gonna go up and get my bag and then I'm gonna follow it down. It's just done like a loop. It's been moving up here and then it's just slowly moved its way down. It's not a very big stack going by the marks. Some of this has received a tonga recently. Before I had a bit of a mark on it. But this. I couldn't catch up with that other animal, it just kept moving down to the thick stuff, and it was just so noisy. on the go again, just gone past lunch and we've decided to do an overnighter around this face. So we're going to slide around this face where we've seen those three hinds. I'm hoping that stags with it. Just heard a gunshot before come from the other people on the spur opposite us and then Zane and his uh, mate are still trying to find the stag that they shot at last night. So it was a mature stag. Got a 308 brass. The uh, shoulder on it broke, split, so they're not too confident on the shot now. Not very long, is it fit? Oh, let's go back up to where you could see. So I'll come up, drop my bag there, and there's a few little windows through the trees to glass, only little bits. I was just moving from right to left, slowly, just glassing as I went. And I was staring at this brown shape going, I wonder how you know if it's a better deer or not. <laughs> and I saw its antler tips pop up. And he stood up and walked 
and started feeding you. Um, and then found your well, youth walked up the ridge, come and found you. We got eyes on him. He's just bedded down now. He might have been moving to get some shade because he's too hot. Yeah, it's pretty warm. It's hot. Today's a beautiful day. Oh, I'm glad we've got new country under us. Just feels good, eh? Yeah. By the way, I found um, a great looking point back onto the faces where those deer are. So once we've done all this and we've given that a rest, that'll be amazing. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm going to need water. So, I've got a lot, I've got half a day now, so. Fuck. Beautiful chocolate looking stag with, I reckon, 27 inches. Is, well, that's a big tick on me. Oh, really? It's the size of a beetle. I don't think I want you to bite me. Jarvis has um, made the decision that if he's not taking a crack at this at 400, then he's shooting it. Oh, is it going to stand up? Has it just turned? Just turned its head. Then he'll be shooting it at 14 metres. So. He's got a 300 magnum which will deliver plenty of energy at that distance. Got him pretty well set up with shooting sticks and he's got two bags so a front and a rear rest No pressure, this is only going on YouTube. <laughs> I'm glad it's you shooting and not me, because I'd clearly miss it. If he stands up and faces up to the left, that's really your ideal shot. Yeah. Bearing in mind that <coughs> his vitals are higher up to the left. Is he about to stand up now? <coughs> He's fully looking to the left. I reckon he's going to stand up soon. <laughs> OK. 
come on. Stand up, big dog. Here he goes. Yep. When you're ready. Just reviewed the footage and it looks like maybe that shot just went over its shoulder and the stag came crashing straight back down into this gut that we're above. Good thing is, is it's still got a couple of hours before it gets dark so we could keep glassing this bowl just here. One shot's not going to completely stuff up an area. We do need to get water, so there's water down in this little gut here, but then we end up spoiling this face that we want to be able to glass. You alright? Yeah. A bit disappointed. <laughs> yeah, it's a bummer. I mean, that stag won't really know what has just happened. find any real flat places to camp so I'm gonna sleep on this deer bed I'll lie in it that way Jarvis will have to find his own bed to sleep in and I'll have to put my bivy up I've just kicked Jarvis a deer bed a bed sorry out of a deer bed Oh, it's just up there above that little terrace, so you can sleep there. There's two horns down there. That's uh, 460. So they're the two resident hinds that have been hanging around that wallow. So it makes me feel like, well, if they're still around below camp, then there's no reason why the other ones wouldn't stay around. <coughs> Jarvis has um, shot round to go and get some water. And I said I'd go and sort camp out. The best I could do was find a couple of deer beds and just cook them a bit flatter and longer. Can't even sleep under the fly together. Did you find water? Yeah. Oh good. Oh sweet. Now I've cooked another bed just below. So I'll sleep in this one, but there's not enough room for two. Welcome to your humble abode. Luxury. finish glassing before it gets dark. A smoky bacon, smoky and crispy. Beautiful. 
How does that feel? Oh, good. <laughs> really? I feel like I'm a deer <laughs> feeding on a game trail. <laughs> oh, my dry lips are splitting. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Actually. Is it? Yeah, this will be good. All right. Yeah. Let's see you in the morning. All right, that's where I'm sleeping tonight, under this little small tieback tarp. And Jarvis is down there. Welcome to day five. We packed up camp in the dark actually. And we've just moved in back to that same spot where Jarvis seen the stag. Thermals are sucking down still, so we want to wait before we start to sidle into new country. I'm up in quite a nice um, face at the moment. It must be close to 900, 850. And this whole valley has just opened up right below me. You can glass onto these northeast facing ridges as well. So that's good. Something will turn up today for sure. There's a couple of deer down there, two hinds making their way. Wonder if a stag will come in. No, there's no way down there. It's way too steep. Trying to make the most of it while the sun's out because our sleeping bags got a bit wet last night. Deer bed. Pretty, pretty noisy coming down this dry ridge. Righty ho! Now we're down. We're down in the, in their, in their face, really. We've moved right down to about 700, 650. And we've got this beautiful face up here. I've seen a stag on it this morning. And I could sidle around and get onto this knob and I think it would be about a 350, 400 metre shot. And you've got all this country opposite us here. This tree's in the way, but behind it, it's pretty much the same as this. And, um, yeah, beautiful spot to be glassing. Gosh, you can see a big black stag in the distance. Big black one. Big stag. Real big stag. That's too far. Seen a young stag in a hind.
stag or in another little fawn. Stag's giving that grey hind a bit of a hard time. There's actually two hinds, a fawn and that young stag. See the three to the left and then the one up and to the right moving in the background. Well, I've spotted um, that young stag with two mature hinds and a fawn, but I'm going to sneak a bit further around this face and open up a bit more country. You can't see it probably, but will break into three gullies, three major gully systems. So I spotted a mature, mature stag about 950 metres. But there's no way we'll get to that. Yeah, no way we'll get to that today. Well, this is where I want to sit and wait until it gets dark. Look at that two faces, there's a face here a face there that stag is feeding under that bluff, right between the V of that tree Come on, like two, two o'clock now. Deer are feeding a lot earlier. It's so cold. Might just get the binos up. It's just normal. Three o'clock, and I am cold, so I'm going to put some clothes on. Get some poly pole fleece pants on these poly pros and put me some. Um, snow gloves on because I've got two more hours of waiting here and I go freezing just spotted a yearling just in this little clearing here feeding his way around this is good this is really good I'm trying to pick out where his mum is she should be around somewhere too Hopefully. So I was up on this ridge, sidling around, actually not far from where I missed that big stag yesterday, where the stag was. And I got to just up there, <laughs> saw this little yearling. It's been probably half an hour looking for its mum. She was nowhere around. So. Up taking the shot. A bit of camp meat will keep us going for another day. So it's a beautiful little hearing. It's in really good condition. Sounds like Jarvis has just got his first scene. A little year shot it in the heart just below where he was looking for his stag from yesterday so he's going to take some meat off that I mean well, at least something to eat at camp because I'm pretty much out of food for dinners I've got a bit of lunch food, some freeze dried um, jerky sorry and nuts and some muesli bars but no, no dinners Anyway, he said he shot it in the heart, which is a shame because that would have been my preference was to eat that fresh. So, 
and wait till it gets dark and we'll move out. disappointing I um, had a stag on this face at 440 and my bullets just gone straight over the top of them Mama same as Jarvis <laughs> overcompensated what's it like to be on the board Redemption? Mm, not quite. <laughs> Nothing will quite make up for that stag. Yeah. Well done. Where'd you hit it? Right behind the shoulder. And then what did it do when you hit it? Well, it did a loop, but it's probably 30 or 40 metres to yeah. it. did a loop and then come back and I saw it flop. So I still could do 10 times that. I know. And like, I, so it was quartering away. So I went through Holland and like, it was a mess on it. Um, still managed to go. Still, I was expecting it to just flop, bang, flop sort of thing, but it's still. <laughs> no. These Samba have they just release this adrenaline yeah. and they just go. Yeah, it's unreal. The heart was in pieces, the lungs were in pieces, like everything was just... It's not just running, it's a nice breath. Mm. Far out. So what did you take off at? Back straps and tendon lines and back legs and all that. Oh, nice, mate. Yeah. It's really cool down there. Well, that much to chew on tonight. I'm out of um, dinners. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's a bit there. There's definitely two meals there. I don't know if you want to <laughs> go down and get a baby. Good job. <laughs> What would you pay for that at a restaurant? Have to be a fifty dollar meal, I reckon. <laughs> big old donkey we're thinking of putting in a big day to climb up onto a ridge that just might give us 
an angle into a bit of an axe cut gully. Um, it's a bit of a risk, but anyway, it's our last full day of hunting. Wednesday, tomorrow we have to pack out. So we're going to ditch our bags, um, maybe another kilometre up this face. Oh, a bit of a stag. A bit of velvet stag. Back up here. Up on this face. He's pretty much where he was last night. He's going to get the first lot of sun. And he'll bed down just like he did yesterday. There must be a nice deer bed there because he is within 10 metre radius of where I saw him yesterday before he must have bedded. There's a couple of trees and I think he beds in behind it. Must use one of those outward facing trees to sit in behind. Um, Jarvis is just picking up his meat down below and he's also checking to see if he can find any blood from that stag that he shot at a couple of days ago but I, it looks like the bullet went a good yeah a good six inches over its back so he said he hasn't found any blood yet I just suggested just follow the marks down for a good 50 or so meters because that might be about the distance that you start to see spots of blood um, and then he's going to route march up and catch up with me and what I'll do is I'll pack up my bag just here and then walk basically sidling along on a game trail. There's a really nice game trail. It's almost like a walking track. And that'll take me to that spur. That little knob just over there that sets you up for a 400 metre, for 20, 30 metre shot up onto that really open face, which is where the stag is. So, as long as the wind plays its part, it has been drifting down, but then you get the old waft where it's trying to push up. It's just not not the right time to start having a thermal work yet. I'll wait a couple of hours. Well, I'm making my way up to that spur that I was talking about and it's amazing how just a little bit of a change in angle opens up so much country. Straight down here now I can see a whole feed face and a game trail that you couldn't see before because the angle wasn't right. Now I'm kind of getting a bit more of an acute angle. It's just, yeah, great to keep moving and opening up different angles. Stop every 10 metres and do a bit of a glass. Got into position now. I've got a good view of this thing up on that face. But tell you what, it's pretty cold when you stop. I've been getting by for most of the trip just with my Kuyu Merino with the Peloton I think this is the 190 the fleece so it's not real thick because when you're moving you generate a lot of heat and you don't want to sweat and create that wetness from within your layers because that can be just as bad when you stop and you're cold and that wind finds its way to bring that moisture and just cool you down but then when I sit down I've got to put this puffer on as warm as toast. Alright, let's get some, uh, let's get the camera on the stag. I guess it should be no surprise that after such a cold night an animal would want to be getting that first lot of sun as soon as it comes up. Is there two of them now? Or is that still the same one? I need to get my binos up. I thought he was in under the rocks. Yeah, there's two. <laughs> there you go. I didn't see that other one before. Just goes to show, away eh, that... Man, you might be on a face glass and thinking there's nothing there. Two minutes later, something's there. Your spirits just lift. You can be quite dejected and feeling down when you're not spotting animals, but... You just, um... You don't know, you might be looking right at them and they're just obscured. So don't beat yourself up too much. Amazing how they just watch each other. Because that little hind, by the looks of it, will be making noise as it's coming down the face. And that stag will be hearing it. Might not necessarily smell it.
actually that's not a hind that is a little stag the one that was with it yesterday he's just a little one he's probably going to come in and have a spa with the other one because that little stag believe it or not was holding some hinds and I've just spotted there is a hind in the bush bedded down in the top right corner not quite top right I'll just zoom in, in the middle of the picture now I think that's her there bedded under that tree and she had he had uh, two mature hinds and a little yearling yesterday or is that one just bedded there centre of screen Hard to see this magnification. It's not great. Focus isn't great. Get these two. I wonder if they're going to square off. I doubt the velvet stag is going to want a bar of it, given it's still in velvet. It'll be interesting to see. I kind of want to be looking through my binos at this. Things you do for your, for your YouTube viewers. <laughs> I think you'd know by now I don't do it for, for those viewers. I actually enjoy capturing this for my own sake. <laughs> Just happens that I enjoy sharing it. I don't know enough about Samba behaviour to, to see whether there's any kind of domineering happening here. But I would presume that that younger stag would be submissive to a bigger stag. But, like I said, he might be a bit more confident and cocky given that he's already got the hinds and he's, he's already rubbed out. Here we go. Get a Harry. How you going, Justin? What are you doing up here? This is my turf. Yeah, but I, I just really want to get a bit of sun. Yeah, we'll piss off. I've got my hinds up here. We want to, we want to bathe, and you know the ladies want to get their bits out. So piss off. No, come on, please, Harry. I really just want to um, be down here if that's okay with you, Justin. I'm warning you, mate. If you don't bugger off, you're going to be in trouble. Oh, come on, please. Interesting. It looks like the little one is able to push around the bigger one. I'm surprised that bigger one's turned away. No way I'd be turning my back on a little uh, aggressor. Be facing forward. It might be the hind. Well, it's hard to tell through this viewfinder. I'm going to have a look through the binos again. Here comes the black and white hunter. How it goes up. Oh, far out. Oh, that was a bit of work. What was happening down there? 
found where that stag was. Let me show that. I found its prints going down the hill. In a fair hurry. You can tell when they slide. Yeah. Um, straight down into the creek. And then there's that much deer saw on the other side, tracks and trails. It's like it just got lost in a, in a maze. Mm. But no blood. And nothing at all. So I think that's. Yeah. Clear it's pretty conclusive, yeah. Oh, it's good yeah. to check that. He lives yeah. on. Someone will enjoy having him. That's right. I think that was the second best outcome out of that situation, aside from us shooting him and, and wounding him. him. Yeah. Plain Just misses. get your binos up on that face and tell me if you can see anything. Start looking about three quarters of the way up. That's the young stag deer centre of screen. He was the one that pushed the velvet stag out. What we're planning on doing though is climbing up a ledge when the therm will start to work and we'll get above them. That should put us within about 50 or so metres, it'll be a pretty steep shot straight down and whether you see them through the tree canopy is another story but could be quite a fun stalk plus it's in the direction I really wanted to head anyway, I wanted to get up on that ridge glass and behind it so plans kind of coming together for day six Yeah, yeah he, he was pushing the hinds around and he came in and faced off with the velvet stag this oh, morning but didn't they didn't clash. The velvet stag um, conceded and moved off. Just went a bit higher than him. It's nice getting glass on animal and then having the time, you know. Having the time to work out a plan. How good would it be to get just above it? Like in that cluster of rocks where that triangle's yeah. created? Yeah. That would, um, right where he is right now, if he bedded down, that would be a clear shot, I think. Give you a bit more confidence than if you were shot from here. Yeah. Plus it's more fun, you know. Like, oh, it's not, it's not a trophy of a no. lifetime. So you've got nothing to lose and it'll be a fun stalk. The same with the yearling is so it was stuff into 60 metres. Mm, more enjoyable. I'm just doing a quick bag dump to take my stuff that I don't need out, camping gear, put it under Jarvis's bag, and we're gonna leave his bag here, and then we're gonna climb. We'll drop down first, get some water, climb up, and then see what plays out with this group of deer. Show us what that thing is. That's all I got. That's what you're going to run on for the day. One go native bar. I think if we get an animal, we might light a fire. Yeah, mate. <laughs> Eat the heart. <laughs> Just waiting for that wind to shift before we start our stalk. Not quite, but it's close. Just gone on nine o'clock, and I'd expect the next half an hour. The wind to shift, and the plan will be. Down here. Well, not quite, I'm not sure if you can see, but up the top edge of that bluff, and climb up all the way into the bar here, so the wind's not quite right yet. We don't want that. In the meantime, just glassing the rest because if the wind's coming down, it's still good to glass. It's not even on the game trail. Yeah. Thank goodness they showed us where to go. <laughs> bluff somehow. All the way down there, it's a fair drop.
a minute, whatever. It goes off when it's done. It tells me. I think it's about a minute, minute and a half. What a view. Through here, that ridge in the background is where we actually walked down and camped on the first night. That's where we've got to climb up to today. I'm going to drop down off this, climb up that, drop our bags off, wrap around and then drop down to camp. cherry tree up in the middle of 1000 meter plus we've been seeing quite a few of them but much smaller this is the biggest one so far it's maybe the um, what's been germinating all these offspring if the deer have been eating any of the seeds when it comes into flower and then pulling them out I did notice that there was quite a few small ones along the game trail so that's probably what's happened well that concludes that big mission over to those deer, we climbed over, saw their sign, um, weren't sure if they've wrapped around the face, but there's sign all around that face, so they've been there for a while, and we never got eyes on them, so climbed up into some new country, glassed it, and found some good productive regrowth um, tussock face, that would be awesome actually for deer, but it would be very difficult to hunt. So now we're going to drop back down the way we came up and hunt down around the bottom third. And I think that'll be it. That'll probably be the last hurrah before we pack up tomorrow and have a, a bit of a climb out. What are these trees called? Oh, I have no idea. A bit of a preach tree here. The needles look a lot like the shea. Oh, you feel so insulated in this stuff. You could imagine deer would love bedding in it because it's so sheltered. Only downside is, is there's no sun in here, so you'd actually have to poke your way up to get a bit of sun, but in terms of being sheltered from the wind, perfect. in the right place for them to drop down on us.
folks. I'm pretty confident this is going to conclude day seven. On the way back to camp, I did everything. I took the boots off, bush stalked. Jarvis was a little bit higher than me. Um, wind was not consistent, not consistent at all. Now camp's 200 metres behind me. I'm feeling so knackered. Oh, we're so tired. Big day today. Yeah, I reckon. Well, it's the biggest day on this trip. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Yeah, but lots of words, really. It's really, really manifesting an outcome tonight. Well, I've learnt a bit on this trip. This is a new area for me, so now that I've seen it, I'd do things differently as you always would. Um, I would head into the zone that the deer are a lot earlier, I think, than what we did. Because um, you're spotting them at such a long distance, and to be honest, I'm not shooting them at that range. I need to be within a couple of hundred metres. So I need to be down in their zone and just strategically setting up so that the wind's good. Anyway, enough rambling. Uh, we're on the final day, which is day eight, and we've got to pack up today, but in fine form. Just got to give it one last crack. So glassing all these faces below us. There was a little bit of rain last night, so I mean, we actually walked through some of those faces right on last light, and I'm not so sure they're going to be that productive, but with a little bit of rain overnight, maybe our scent's washed away. Have spotted a hind way in the distance on the other side, um, underneath where those other guys camped. So, I mean, that's within 100 metres of where they camped. So, I would think their scent's been washed away and that hind's back to feeling comfortable again. So while Jarvis and I have been reflecting on the hunt and reflecting on what it means to be a hunter and reflecting on the fact that this is our last chance in this terrain before we head home, I spot this stag right up in the head of this gut over there. It's about, I don't know, I reckon two and a half k's, two, 2.2 k's away and I'm going to have a crack. I don't know if anything will come of it but it's my final stone to turn over and I'll feel good about it. Can you see him again? We've made pretty good progress in an hour. We've managed to drop down off our camp, which is at the same elevation, and climb up. We're now 500 metres from where I've marked the location of that stag, and the wind's just shifting. I want to wrap further around this way so that we get the wind out of his direction. Thank you. 
ice veins. Cruising in my lane fast, call it high speed. I've been working hard, yeah, I've been working nightly. If you think you'll win, ha, nah, f likely. I be taking shots, yeah, cold blooded, icy. Watching numbers grow is what I call sightseeing. In the front row, run it up when they hype me. The following grows, they know how to ignite me. Call me CEO, I've been running sh right, see. And I ain't playing games, I create my own lane, making pleasure out of pain, uh. Turning losses into gains, I'm the boss, I'm making change, I've been rocking this exchange, uh Popping off and risking things, gonna make a fucking name, I just wanna be famous But I don't want that cheap fame, no I'm not that vain, I just wanna be greatness I just wanna be greatness, I just wanna be greatness Just rocked up at arrivals here in Perth, and Tim Hartley is actually one of the fellow uh, West Australian ADA members. And tell us how you got on this week. We got on really well. Got a got a Sandra in um, Victoria and a fellow in Tasmania. Yeah, nice. So, uh, I'm about to look what's in here. Chili bin full of mixed meat. Chili bin, nice. You yeah. can use the right terminology. So I tell you what, that's what I love about yeah, being an ADA member is being able to see fellow people. Leg like this working hard for good quality prime organic meat and that's better than you can get from a supermarket. Absolutely. Good to see you. <laughs>